Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. It's good to see you all uh, live uh, with this session. Uh, hopefully, we won't take much, uh, inshallah, about half an hour. Uh, so let's go ahead. I call this session Train Your Brain. Why? Uh, it's because of a few reasons. In fact, uh, I've seen uh, many uh, people, uh, students or non-students, even workers, have some difficulties to absorb and learn. So, and I did that small research and I found out the reasons from people who did a similar research before. And uh, fortunately that I have found people have the same uh, or have written books with the same subject. And believe me, uh, I didn't know that uh, opera, for example, has a book uh, with the same title, Train uh, Your Brain. The, the main objectives of this uh, small or simple session is to understand our brain. Uh, of course, we have some doctors here. I can see Reem uh, is Dr. Reem. So excuse me for my medical terms or terminologies. Uh, so I'm not a doctor or a medical doctor. Uh, so, uh, so we will understand few things about our brain and we will see how uh, people learn and we will learn some tricks and techniques to make us learn faster. So let's dive in. As an introduction, there are a few questions here. Uh, let, let's just raise them because people raise these questions. Uh, how do we learn is the first question. Why some of us learn things more easily than uh, the others? And why can't we learn something if we try to learn? And why do we learn and forget? Now, Few research studies have been done and I picked two, the most easiest two done by Dr. Wendy, she's a professor uh, of neuroscience and Dr. Lara, she is uh, a brain researcher. So let's go ahead and ask the first question, why, uh, uh, we are, uh, why are we not learning? Uh, we are not learning because of a simple reason, uh, we are not ready to learn. Our brain is not ready to learn. Uh, we are basically, or the term is called, we are transcribing. Transcribing means just having this information for a temporary period. Why? For various reasons that we will talk about uh, in a minute. Let's understand some simple brain anatomy. And as I said, we have a few doctors here joining us tonight. So it's not uh, uh, about the terminologies themselves, but it's more to understand the functionality of uh, the brain. So uh, most of us know, if not all of us know, that the brain has uh, two sides or two lobes, as they call them, uh, left side and right side or left lobe and right lobe. Now, we know that the right side is responsible for controlling the left side. However, the right side is responsible for the uh, art, uh, emotions, um, uh, music, uh, acting, uh, whereas the left side is responsible for controlling the right side and is responsible for analysis, math, words, text, uh, and so on. Uh, moreover, the brain has a front and back as well. Now, front and back sides are responsible also for a few things. However, uh, we want to focus on two parts only. The front side, uh, which is called the front cortex, and a simple area in the left and right side of the brain, it's called the hippocampus. Now, as I said, excuse my medical terminologies, yeah, it's called the hippocampus. This is the way I pronounce it. I hope I am correct. Uh, now, before we proceed, let's uh, know some facts about the brain. Uh, you know, the brain has about 86 billion neurons, which are the cells, and it's about 2% of the total weight of the body. And it can store from 3 to 11 terabytes of uh, information. 3 to, 1, uh, 3 to 1,000 terabytes, yes. And it contains 60% fat and it consumes 20% of our energy and it weighs about a little bit more than one and a quarter kg. Yeah. Uh, these are some simple information or some 
a few facts about the brain. Now, a question that I ask people when it comes to the functionality of the brain, and surprisingly, uh, the answer is surprising. Uh, so how much of it do we use? How much of our brain do we use? With all this technology we have, uh, people trying to find some medicines uh, for Corona, uh, we go to the moon, we have this nice technology going live and address people and reach people. We have our laptops. Uh, the usage of our brain between or ranges between 1% to 2%. And this is according to Tony Bozan. It's, he is a, Brit, a British uh, author and scientist. So according to the research that have been done, the average use of our brain is only uh, 1% to 2%. So imagine we use it double. Imagine we use it 4%. Uh, what human can do. More facts about the brain, we will talk about them in a few seconds, but let's focus on what I mentioned, uh, the uh, frontal cortex uh, that is responsible for decision-making, focus, attention, and personality. That's why when we want to think and focus, we go and do like this. Yeah, so yeah, let me think about it. Yeah, so it's, it's just uh, on the front side of the brain. However, the, uh, the both sides of the brain, as I said, uh, it has what we call the hippocampus, and this is responsible for the long-term memory. So the long-term memory is somewhere here, yeah, small piece in the brain. It's called the hippocampus, and I need you to remember this term later on. Uh, because it is responsible for us and why we forget and why uh, we don't forget things. Now, how do we learn? In fact, uh, there are many theories about learning. And uh, there are the, the, the main two theories that I would like to share with you today are the empiricism. What is empiricism? This is from the empirical, that means practically or by experience, by trial. So we go and try things and then we learn. For example, if I take a small baby, uh, about let's say two years, just about to learn, and, and instead of telling him this is, for example, a mobile, so I go and tell him this is a tree. Yeah, just an example. So every day or whenever this comes into picture, I tell him, hey boy, this is a tree, this is a tree, this is a tree. Yeah, so when this baby or kid grows up, whenever he sees this or she sees this, uh, he will say it's a tree. Uh, why? Because he learned this from childhood, so he doesn't know that this, this is called mobile. Or, so we learn from experience or how we learn and absorb or address things. The other theory uh, about learning is called rationalism. Uh, rationalism is not based on experience, based on our common sense what we feel, uh, what will happen to us. Uh, for example, if you stand on a sk skyscraper or on a high building, and I tell you jump. Now, will you jump? Uh, of course not. Uh, you know, if you jump, you hurt yourself, you may die or something dangerous could happen to you because you feel it, you know it, it's a common sense. And nobody probably told you, nobody, you have never jumped before, but you know this is something dangerous. So this is called rationalism. Yeah, This is one way of learning or another way of learning. Um, if we dive a little bit deeper in uh, and talk or mention some more facts about the brain as, a, as just an introduction to this interesting subject, uh, now, even if we are at rest or we are asleep, our brains are highly active, still active, still working. Yeah. Uh, so even if we do nothing, our brains are working. Uh, now, let's look at it. What about if we want to learn a new skill? We want to learn something. What will happen? Of course, things will, ha will happen into the brain. Uh, these changes that happen uh, will change the formation of the brain. Now, maybe you ask me, Hassan, do you mean the structure? Yes, it, it is the structure, in fact. This change in the brain is called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity. What do you mean by neuroplasticity or how is neuroplasticity is 
uh, or happen in the brain, it happens in three main ways. First one is uh, chemical or chemically, so chemical change in the brain, and I will explain how. Or the brain structure might change in the brain or will change, in fact, it's not mine. And the functionality or brain's function will change. And all these three happen simultaneously at the same time. Uh, so it's not the chemical will change only in the brain or the concentration, in fact, of the chemical will change in the brain, uh, will happen separately or the structure of the brain will uh, happen separately. You know, all of them uh, will happen at the same time or simultaneously. So let's have a look uh, and talk about the first one. The chemical is basically is uh, when you uh, try to do something, when you try to learn, uh, there are chemical signals uh, that will go in the, in the brain which will form these actions and reactions. So if, for example, if you put your hand on a hot surface, uh, this reaction uh, is done by the brain because of these chemical reactions or chemical, let's say, movements or concentration in the brain uh, will increase. Uh, however, this uh, learning uh, or this chemical change in the brain is not for a long period of time. Uh, that's why uh, you forget. What mainly we are looking for in order to absorb or keep information is the long-term memory where we can store the information for a long period of time. And I will explain the chemical and the long-term in, in the coming example. Uh, so chemical change in the brain happens only for a short period of time. So that's why we forget and this we go back to maybe the first example why uh, we are not learning we are trans uh, transcribing uh, put yourself for example if you attend the lecture yeah uh, you learn for the first let's say half an hour or the one hour of the lecture you leave the lecture you go home and then you forget probably half of it what happened it's because of the chemical concentration in the brain uh, and the concentration uh, finished or became low and you started to forget now what we are looking for to store the information for a longer period of time is uh, the altering brain's structure structure means how it is yeah uh, how it's built the physical structure of the brain will change and this is what we need for a longer period of time and as i go on i will explain what i mean by a structure um, Good evening for those who joined uh, now. Uh, welcome. I don't know how much you missed. Okay. Uh, what do I? What do you mean by chemical change and structural change? Let's say you go today and you try to learn a new skill. You try to learn how to play piano, play guitar, or you want to learn how to juggle balls. Yeah, by your hands, three ball, four balls. Yeah, it's a skill. Uh, you practice, of course. You attend a lesson with a trainer, with an instructor or, or someone who will coach you how to do it. And you, let's say after one hour or two hours, you feel yourself, you are learning, you are mastering the skill. The class finished, session finished, you go home, you come back the second day and you try to practice again. You see yourself less than how you left uh, yesterday. Why? Because what happened in the brain on day one or on the first session was only chemical change for a temporary period of time. Still, the structure of the brain has not changed. How do you change it? We will, we will come to it by what we call, uh, a, well, everybody knows by practicing more and more. But what happens to the brain is the physical change of the brain that changes. And this is what we will talk about uh, in the coming uh, minutes. So what we need again is to change the structure of the brain to save or to keep the information for a long period of time. And let me tell you, if the brain doesn't forget, doesn't delete anything. Your brain doesn't delete. That's why if I ask you a simple question now, um, probably you are in university now or already working and have kids. Uh, can you remember uh, something happened at school when you were in grade uh, 10, uh, something, 
good, something bad, something interesting, something funny. Uh, probably most of you will recall this first image that happened when he or she fought with her friend and you pulled uh, her hair or he his hair. Uh, he punched you and you lost one or two tooth in your, uh, from your mouth or you bleed it from your nose. So you remember this image uh, nicely now. Why do you remember it now? The key question is how you saved the, um, this image and the way you retrieved it now. Why did you retrieve it now? Because I targeted that area in the brain and uh, see, yes, I have few people saying exactly. Yeah, I targeted that area of the brain where this piece of picture or image uh, was there and you pulled it out and you retrieved it and uh, you used it. Uh, so this was a brain structural change, although you don't remember it, but it is still there. How is it happen? It happened. Uh, how is the brain structure change because of the practice, which I will talk about it in a few seconds uh, or a few minutes, maybe. Now, the third way is or to to keep the information or uh, the brain uh, absorbs or keeps the information is what we call the functionality or the function of the brain. Uh, let's say you are uh, good in math or you are a professional artist. Uh, it could, you could be uh, drawing or you could be doing some makeup. Uh, how did you learn that? Now, there are various ways to learn that. Uh, probably by inheritance means if you are good in math, your father was a mathematician and uh, you got that just by God. Yeah, yeah, uh, inheritance from your parents and you became, you became good in this. Or similarly, if you are an artist and you like drawing or you are so good in drawing, you get that from uh, your parents and you become so good. This is what we call brain functionality. Uh, if not the case, you wake up one day, you try one skill and you find yourself so good in it or uh, you know how to do it, then you continue doing it day by day until, until you master it. And this is what we call brain's functionality. So the brain then will, will become so good in this area uh, and uh, will keep on doing that. This is what we call brain's functionality. So subconsciously, you will see yourself good at it. Uh, probably a good example if when you when you learn how to drive uh, first day when you got your driving license and you are by the steering wheel if i ask you uh, how to drive from point a to point b uh, you will pay so much attention to the road yeah and you lo you don't leave the steering wheel and your eyes are focused 10 years from the road what will happen uh, you drive from home to wherever you want to go and you reach there and you don't even know that you have reached there. Why? Because you've got and you mastered that skill and your brain or the way you drive the car is in the subconscious subconscious mind and it has become, it has become just a small uh, habit that you do every day. So you do it. This is the brain's functionality. Yeah. Now, let's let's hold on for a second here and move to something else beside that. Uh, what we call it learning styles, yeah? So what we are doing today, we are building, um, you know, from the start until now, we are building uh, uh, the information bit by bit until we learn to the final conclusion or final destination where we want to reach, and that's uh, training our brain, yeah? But first of all, before we know how to train our brain, we need to understand a few basic things. Uh, so let's understand learning styles, what we call it learning styles. I don't know if you have heard about it. Uh, many people have different uh, learning styles and maybe know uh, those who are in the training field, they know one of the training styles uh, that's called VARC. VARC is uh, a terminology or acronym stands for uh, uh, visual, auditory, read, write, and kinesthetic. What do we mean by that? People have their own way of learning and they prefer to learn in one or two styles. Mainly, 
people will uh, for example me if, if i put an example on myself i am a visual learner i have to see to learn now if i uh, give an example here if you tell me hasanain uh, can you come to my house uh, i will say okay show me the map yeah i will not tell you explain to me how to get to your house i will say show me the map because i'm a visual learner auditory learner they will say explain to me how to get to your house so they like to listen to the information and learn it uh, read write yeah read write learners will ask you to write or explain in written way uh, how to get to their house kinesthetic people which is doing by hand practically they have for example to drive behind you to reach to the destination now as i said people prefer to learn or every individual uh, prefers to learn in one way however there are multimode learners uh, multimode learners mean people have two or more than one style to learn now why am i telling you this uh you need to know which style you are and if you know if you are a visual learner for example you go for things that will uh, help you to learn more visually if you are a visual learner and try to read to understand you will not or maybe you don't understand as much as if you see things uh, so first of all learn or know or understand your learning style prior to go and learn something this is one key tip here the second key tip is uh, which uh, type or which uh, brain side uh, you are you need to know are you a left brainer or right brainer if you are for example a right brainer where you are uh, good in uh, let's say arts uh, it will be difficult for you to learn uh, math for example let me repeat again it's not impossible it is difficult what you need to do to make it a little bit easy is to put more let's say effort and try to practice the left side of the brain because you are a right brainer again what do i mean uh, or how did you get that again it's from your experience or from your parents you have been practicing from your childhood until now your left side or right side probably so it's not easy to switch to the other side of the brain and uh, there are some people who are equal yes i can see yes there are some people who are who can use both sides of the brain of course and these people i don't want to call them genius but it depends on the way they grow up uh, it depends on the way they use their brain and it is possible it can happen you can use both sides of the brain uh, I don't say very rarely, I don't have a number, but uh, probably a few. That's why you see pe many people are either left side or right side of the brain. Now, you need to know that as well. Now, let's move to a point uh, where maybe you are interested or the main focus of this uh, small discussion. It's how to train my brain. You train your brain in three main ways. The first one is exercising. What do we mean by exercising? And it's exercising physically, yeah? Doing some, uh, you know, practical exercises. Uh, not necessarily going to the gym, you don't have to pay too much. And especially nowadays, no gyms are open, so you can do that at home, stay home, stay safe. So you can do it at home, yeah? Use the staircase, go up and down, use the rope, some push-ups, press-ups, do whatever you like. Yeah, no need to go outside. Now, why do you need to exercise? Research studies have shown that this has an immediate effect on your, uh, let's say, uh, what we call them neurotransmitters uh, or the hormones in the brain, like dopamine and adrenaline and serotonin. Yeah, so all these will increase in the brain, which will increase 
uh, your mood. Now, it depends. As I said, we have doctors here. They can elaborate more if you contact them directly. Yeah, but uh, these things will increase in the brain, which which will increase the chemical reaction in the brain for the short term, as well as it will increase the or it will change the structure of the brain in the future. So exercising physically, in fact, will help you for a short period of time as well as for a long period of time. So for short term memory and long term memory. Yeah. So why? Because it will go or it will address directly what I told you at the beginning. This is small piece in the brain, left and right. That's called the hippocampus. Yeah. So the hippocampus will increase, in fact, in size because the cells will increase uh, in the brain or the volume of the brain will increase. Yeah. This also the first thing is to train your brain is exercising. The second way is your behavior. Now, behavior comes from your attitude. Uh, now, what's the difference between attitude and behavior? Uh, very simple. I know it's a side subject, but many people get confused. Behavior is something you see. Yeah. Attitude, something you cannot see. So behavior is a reaction of an attitude. Uh, so you need to change your behavior towards addressing problems, uh, towards when you face a problem, uh, when you uh, try to solve a problem, uh, don't sit back uh, or run away from it. And this is what we call it a mental block. So as soon as you see something, you say, I can't. You see a puzzle, you say, I can't. You see a mathematical, let's say, equation, you can't. You want to learn a skill, you say, I can't. Yeah. So this will not help you learn. Yeah. You need to address Go ahead, change the behavior internally and try to learn. Yeah. So the second way to, to, to learn or to improve your learning, to train your brain is to change your behavior. The most interesting part is the third one is the practice. You need to practice and you know how much you need to practice. Listen to me carefully. You need to practice to master, let's say, a skill or to call yourself a professional. Those who claim that they are professional. Yeah. You need to practice minimum at least 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours. And that's equivalent to 400, almost 416 days, which is about 14 months. So if you call yourself a pro, yeah. Think back. Now, it is the number of hours. Yeah, it's not just saying you have that number of years of experience and you worked only for physically 100, uh, 200 uh, of hours. Yeah, so you need minimum or at least 10,000 hours of practice to master a skill. Why? Look at me and listen to this example. Let's say you have a field of grass, yeah, green grass. Uh, you walk on it on the first day. Yeah, today is the first day you walk on that grass. Uh, what will happen to the grass? The grass will bend only. Yeah, so the grass was straight. Yeah, big field of grass. The grass will bend only. Day by day, you walk on that grass. After, let's say, one week or two weeks, what will happen to the grass? The grass will go off or will, 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 will fade a little bit. Yeah, will go away, will fade away. Yeah, so you are creating a small path on this exactly same area you walked in for that period of time. Let's say you walked for a month or two months on the same area, on the same path that you created. What will happen to the grass? The grass will go off. You, can, you will peel it off. Yeah. So you create or you created now a well-defined path on the same area you walked in for that month or that period of time, the long period of time. This is exactly what happens in your brain. You practice more, you engrave in your brain this is skill, yeah? So engraving, you know, engraving in Arabic, and it's yeah? So you basically engrave that skill or what you want to master inside your brain. And this is what happens to your brain structure. When we said how you change your brain structure, this is exactly what happens in your brain. 
That's why you need the more, let's say, practice more. The more you practice, the more you engrave, the more you create these paths in your brain. So things will remain in your brain. You will not forget them easily. Even if you stop for a while, let's say you have this skill, uh, whatever skill, let's say playing a guitar, and now you master playing a guitar for, let's say, 10 years, and then you pause for maybe five years. You don't play guitar for five years. Of course, yeah, this amount of experience or professionalism you had for a period of time will become less. However, as soon as you pick the guitar, you start, you pick it up again. So what you are trying to do now here, you are engraving again on the path that was still there. It was a bit fading, yeah, or maybe a little bit of grass grew up again on the same place. However, it is still there. So you just need a bit of practice again and you come back again. It's not like as if it's starting from scratch. This is basically, or these are the three things that you need to keep in your mind to train your brain, yeah? Now we'll talk about more tips or more tricks. However, let's, re let's record, let's see we, if we can remember them. The first one was exercise. So you need to exercise physically, like activities, some sports. Second one is behavior, yeah? So you need to change your behavior towards addressing uh, a problem or what you want to learn. For example, when you want to read a book, you just grab it and read it. Don't procrastinate and say later and later. This is another behavior. Yeah. Yeah. As, yes. As you said, physical activity is the, number one. Number two is uh, behavior. And the third one, what's the third one? Who can write it? Practice. Yeah. So the third one is practice. So you need more practice and minimum for 10,000 hours. Okay. Hello, bro. I have my brother online all the way from Canada. Hi, bro. Yeah, practice. Thank you, Ahmed. And my daughter Hayat is watching me here, sitting with me here, trying to uh, maybe give me some hints. Hayat, she's online and watching me. <laughs> okay, now let's go to more tricks. What do we have more tricks? More tricks to learn. Uh, first thing. Now, something I see and I really don't like. And this is the first main trick if you want to learn something. Now, today you cannot do it. Uh, but previously, uh, let's say before coronavirus, whenever I go to a coffee shop nearby, Costa Coffee, Starbucks, sit there, grab a cup of coffee. The, in the coffee shop is packed and full of people who are revising for their exams. And because I live here in Sagaya, nearby Salmania Hospital and the college here, uh, the university. Uh, doctors are revising for their exams in the coffee shop. And now, if I see them one day, uh, if I remember them, if I visit the doctor, inshallah, uh, nobody visits a doctor. And if I see the same one who was revising in Costa Coffee, I will run away, I will not visit that doctor. How can you, how can you revise for an exam prepare yourself for an exam in an area that's not ready it's not comfortable it's not prepared well so the first key tip for your brain to absorb and store information is your brain must be ready noisy place of course will not make you focused will not make you concentrate in what you are trying uh, yeah, thank you, uh, April's 313. Yeah, these are medical students and I see them. Your brain is not ready. How can you absorb? And let me illustrate this with an example. Uh, those who have kids or inshallah will have kids in the future or maybe they have their nephews or cousins or nieces. Uh, what? Uh, you remember there is a small toy or maybe you still have the small toy where it has some shapes some let's say triangles squares uh, cylinder and you try to put each one in the same hole with the same shape yeah so you what we used to do or even now i try to put the square in the circle it doesn't fit or the circle in the triangle it doesn't fit why obviously it's a different shape exactly this is what happens in your brain your brain is not ready you cannot fit the information uh, while it's not ready you have to prepare the brain in order for the information to fit in and stored properly 
So number one tip, prepare your brain. Yeah? Be ready to absorb information. Starbucks Medical School. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I like it. Uh, well, I know, let's think about it. Yeah, yeah. How come you go there, you saw these uh, lab coats uh, sitting there, books are open and half of the time they are chatting. Yeah, half of the time they are chatting. Uh, okay, never mind. So uh, one more thing, if you if you are in a bad mood, yeah, how can you revise for an exam and you are in a bad mood? Uh, daydreaming or overthinking or worried, yeah, all of these things will not make you focus, yeah. Now the second thing is how to increase focus. A second tip, simple exercise, take a piece of paper, white piece of paper, put a small spot, yeah, uh, it's not too small, yeah, uh, about size of uh, beans, yeah, one, one piece, uh, stick it on the wall, sit and try to focus on that small black spot that you put, yeah, they show off, thank you about it, yes, of course. Uh, so take that piece of paper, put a small spot, yeah? Put it on the wall, sit, keep your eyes open, don't close your lid, try to focus on that as much as you can and see how much you can leave your eyes open, yeah? Uh, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, or the more you keep your eyes open, of course, you cannot keep it for long for the, for, uh, the first time. However, after practicing more and more, the more you focus, the, uh, I mean, the more you sit and do this exercise, exercise, the more you can focus without closing your uh, eyelids. This will help the brain concentrate and focus more in whatever uh, it is required because you are practicing or training your brain to focus more and more. So this is the second tip. Uh, the third tip is memory training. Memory training, how do you train your memory? Memory training can happen in various ways, but I will give you one simple way today is by grouping. Now, if I give you a piece of paper with uh, scattered, let's say things, let's say different types of animal. Uh, let's say there are some yeah, animals, uh, insects, birds, uh, fish, uh, and let's say there is about 15 of them. And I say, yalla, look at the picture and remember them. You might remember some of them. You might remember all of them. Yeah, it depends on how uh, good you are in, memor in re remembering some images. However, again, these things are mixed. Your brain doesn't like mixed stuff. Your, your brain likes uh, organized things. So the easy and simple way is to group them. So you can group the animals together, group insects together, group, let's say, for example, fish or type of fish together. Yeah. This will make it very much simpler for you, for your brain to recall the information. Again, let me emphasize here, it depends all on the way you learn or store the information so can you, so you, you can retrieve it. Yeah. Of course, yes. Thank you very much. Depending on uh, your short term memory or power or length. And again, the more you train your brain, the more you become, uh, you know, experienced or expert in this. So this is another tip. It, it's called memory training. So I have just two more for you. Uh, the third or the fourth one is called mapping, you know, mapping or making some association with some stuff. Uh, similarly to this example, if I give you a list uh, of uh, things, uh, uh, different shapes of things, let's say I give you a list of, uh, let's say, a candle, uh, a duck, heart, uh, ship with a sail, and I tell you just remember them. How can you remember them? Well, a simple way, some association. If you want to know that the first word was candle, just remember, Candle is a straight line that looks like number one. So number one and candle looks like each other or look like each other. So number one is candle. Number two is a duck. How do I remember that number two is a duck? Yeah, number two is number two like that. So the shape of the neck of the duck is like number two. Yeah, so number two is duck. Or 
the duck has two wings, for example. So number two is the duck. Uh, if it's a heart for number three, yeah. So the top of the heart looks like number three, yeah. Number three. So number three is heart. Uh, a ship with a sail, you know, sail looks like a triangle. That's the fourth one. So number four, yeah, is a sailing ship. Yeah. So I am trying to make my brain uh, map. And this is, by the way, how uh, memories in the computer or in the computers work. They work on mapping, the technology called mapping. So they try to map or link, link things together. So basically, uh, uh, go to YouTube and there are many, many exercises or many examples uh, on how to do some memory mapping uh, techniques yeah, or examples. It's a very effective technique just to recall uh, things by linking things together. Last technique that I would like to share with you, with you, which I use it practically, and I have an example here that I will show you that I made it. It's called mind maps. Maybe you have heard about this technique. It's, uh, uh, you can attend many workshops about mind maps. Again, it's from Tony Bozan. It's a wonderful scientist. Uh, uh, mind maps are, oh, let me show you. What is a mind map? This is a mind map. Yeah, I hope you can see it uh, clearly. Yeah, this is a mind map. This is a summary of a book. Yeah, a very big book. A research book. I summarize it in one A3 piece of paper. And I, I don't say I memorized it, but I can recall it. Yeah, it's easy for the brain. You can see what we mean by a mind map. A mind map. Uh uses what we call radiation thinking. Uh, your brain doesn't understand words. لا مو شجرة العائلة. Okay. <laughs> I don't know my uh, family tree to put it or it's not as big as this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what can you use mind map for? First of all, mind map can be used for anything. For problem solving, for remembering, for summarizing, and by the way, uh, I think I did a mind map course for Americana, if I remember, long time ago, and they used it for the recipes uh, uh, in the restaurants. Now, don't blame me if the recipes are bad. Yeah, these, these were their recipes, and this is, but they created mind maps just to remember what to put in each sandwich. This was a long time ago, a few years back. But mind maps can help you remember things. How do you use mind maps? You start from the center and create, you know, uh, curved lines. Yeah, curved lines. Yeah. And then you start putting words or symbols along with words on each branch. Yeah. This will help you remember because you are using your visual. Yeah. Right side of the brain. Yeah. Images. You are using, again, the, sim the words by using your left side uh, of the brain. So you can map things together easily. And your brain doesn't understand words. Your brain understands images. Yeah. So it will be very easy for the brain to use or to recall the information once they are stored again. So it's about mainly it's about learning, storing and retrieving. Now, to conclude this, this is the last tip. To conclude uh, what we spoke about, uh, in fact, today we learned a few t tips or a few information, a few facts about the brain, yeah, uh, left side of the brain, right side of the brain. Uh, there is also something at the front, something at the back. Uh, each has its own functionality. Few things will help us for short term memory. M more things will help us for long term memory. Uh, some techniques we need to use uh, to train our brain to become uh, better. And these things, uh, as I explained earlier, start by preparing yourself, preparing your brain to be ready. Uh, use some techniques like mapping, focusing on a piece of paper every day. Use mind maps or mapping technique. Uh, the more you exercise, they become, uh, you become better. And finally, practice. You need to practice more. Uh, to become better. Yeah, uh, this is a summary of the day. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Let me see. I think there is a question. Close the comments. Okay, in the future, inshallah. Okay, inshallah, we will do that. 
uh, we'll close the comments in the future. In fact, uh, I need to know more or to learn more about uh, uh, using live. I don't go many uh, live to interact, but inshallah, we will do it more often now. So I hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, please, uh, if you have a few questions, fire the question in the comments so it's easier for me. Uh, go ahead. Allah yafiq, Mr. Abdul Aziz Al Ali, ila liqa an akhar wa qareeb. Shukran jazeelan, ajma'een. Thank you, Dr. Reem. Thank you, Abu Ali. Shukran jazeelan. Thank you, Zahra Hubel. My love, my wife. Thank you very much. Thank you, my sister, Dr. Isra. Okay, thank you, Dr. Aprils. 313, thank you for joining. Shukran, Mr. Abdul Aziz. Shukran. Yes, inshallah, we try to do more session uh, as often as we can. Thank you very much, Abu Ali. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Yasser. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you, Zahra. Kul tawfiq lil jami'. I hope it was a light session and you enjoyed it. Oh, my mother is online. Okay, thank you, mom. Shukran jazeelan, um hasanin. Uh, okay, my brother, Maytham. Thank you very much. Yeah, Sadak, my brother joined all the way from Canada. Will you save it? Yes, inshallah. I hope I can save it and it doesn't go away. I will ask my daughter, Haya, do you know how to save this after I finish? Yeah, so I will ask my daughter to help me to save it. And what I will do, I try to post it in my uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, so I'll put it in my YouTube channel uh, later on. So you can, uh, it's the same, speak and lead. So just go to speak and lead uh, in YouTube, speak and lead. Uh, it will be there. Uh, if you search for it, just say speak and lead Hassan and Safar. This is my YouTube channel. I will post this uh, later on tonight. Yes. So if there is no question, so I will leave you all in safe hands. So stay home, stay safe. Uh, try to be as much as possible uh, on your own. Uh, and inshallah, this uh, coronavirus will uh, go away soon. Have posit positive faith. I uh, wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have anything, you can contact me on my personal, uh, uh, let's say, by personal message, uh, direct message on my account, or if you have my number, uh, you can uh, WhatsApp me uh, later. Thank you very much. See you. Uh, Ma'as-salamah.